Hidden Magic with Flexanol, the hairspray that holds and holds yet loves to be combed. Regular or extra control. Come on, they're waiting. Not like this. My hair won't comb. Some date. Darn stiff hairspray. Darling, get rid of that stiff spray. Who are you? I'm Wanda the Witch. Now, try Hidden Magic. The new hairspray with Flexanol. If your hair's mussed, it combs back. Come on, you're waiting. Try Hidden Magic. It holds your love to be combed. And now, let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> and now, from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the star of stage as well as television who is playing the title role in the new play, Mrs. Daly, which opens this Wednesday at the Golden Theater here in New York City. Miss Arlene Francis. Baseball fans know that the catcher's equipment is known as the tools of ignorance. Here is a man too brilliant to have continued to use those tools. The big league voice of the Yankees, Mr. Joe Garagiola. And to my left, the president of the Mickey Mantle Fan Club, the syndicated columnist of the New York Journal American, Ms. Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, the fortunate producer of Arlene's play, which will find us all at the Golden Theater Wednesday night, her loving husband, Mr. Martin Gable. The man I'm about to introduce was born in South Africa, and he's made a greater contribution to American television than the great golfer Gary Player from South Africa, Mr. John Charles Daly. For those who were not with us last Sunday, it needs to be explained that Bennett has gone off to uh, Spain and Greece and Israel, will be gone for about three weeks. We hope he's having a wonderful vacation, and I think the only good fruits that his absence could bear would be that we have Martin Gable with us in his fixed position, and Joe Garicciola on the uh, panel. Joe, this is uh, a very nice and happy surprise for all of us, and I suppose it's proper it should be this weekend because they had Mickey Mantle Day on Saturday, and it was a great day for baseball. And uh, you do a great many nice things for baseball every day of the week. Good to have you with us. Thank you. That weather on Saturday you can have. I must say one of the bright spots of my summer was riding the uh, California Zephyr up through the Rockies where they tell me they have five feet of snow. On Saturday here, you could melt all the snow in the Rockies in about an hour. What a weekend. <laughs> well, we've got some interesting occupations, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as usual. I might even warn you that they're trickier than usual in many ways. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the show, but right now, we'll meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Hello. Elizabeth Woods. Right, ma'am? Miss or Mrs. Woods? Me. I have to ask that question. I don't ask it of the men, but I, we wouldn't know whether to call you Miss or Mrs. otherwise. You see, where are you from? From Oxfordshire in England, but uh, I'm living in Montreal at the moment. From Oxfordshire in England, but you're living now in Montreal. Yes. Well, it's nice to have you. You're your neighbor from our immediate north right now. Yes. All right, Miss Woods, may I present our panel? Yes. And then if you'll join me over here, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel 
we will tell you that Miss Woods is salaried and deals in a product and we'll begin the festivities with Arlene Francis. Miss Woods, is it a product that I might use? Yes. Is it a product that I might have in my house? Possibly. Yes, if you had a tendency to use the product, we would agree that at one time or another, it's possible that you might have it in the house. Is it a product that is consumed, Miss Woods? <laughs> is it consumed by putting it in one's mouth? <laughs> no. no. Now, that would be one down and nine to go, Mr. Grigioli. Would I use the product as well as Arlene? Yes. Uh, can I consume this product both indoors and outdoors? Well, now, that you, you understand that we've agreed you would not put it into the human mouth, but uh, you, are you asking if it could be consumed indoors as well as outdoors? As outdoors. I think we would have to say in that case, no. That's two down of eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, then, Miss Woods, uh, would I be correct in assuming that it is usually consumed out of doors? Yes. Uh, is it consumed by people or animals doing something to it? Uh. Ooh, this is a sticky wicket. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> <coughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. We could have hung you up on a technicality there, but we're feeling very generous tonight. In fact, Miss Woods is generous. I'm never generous, so we won't hang you up on a technicality. Well, I concede your generosity while expecting a no on my next question. Um, do the people or animals approach this product with the object of doing something destructive to it? Yes. Good heavens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Is this um, product solid rather than liquid? Uh, Semi-liquid. Well, actually, in, in, in the broad terms that we use, Miss Woods, we would call it uh, solid. Uh, does it have a specific temperature? Does it have a specific temperature? I wish I knew it well enough to be able to tell you. Uh, <laughs> I would, Henry, say, yes, yes. I would say this, in the same degree that we are all expected to have a specific temperature which has a variable factor in it depending on climate <laughs> and also our condition of health, we would feel that this product might also, in that same term of reference, have a specific temperature. Now you know why he's can. Exactly. Thank you very much, John. It was a very entertaining answer. Um, Miss Woods, uh, is... Gee, I forgot what I was going to ask. Um, this... Uh, product uh, ever alive? Yes. Um, is it deliberately destroyed yes. for some specific purpose? Yes. Uh, is it because it is a menace to anything? No. So long as it isn't eaten. No menace, it. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. I'm right in thinking then that it's uh, animal. Um, is the destructive purpose to which it's put uh, for the good of the community or the area? I would think that anybody who had any relationship to um, the intent of putting it to destructive use would feel that if successful that uh, life had been very good, yes. <laughs> Does what it destroys, is what it destroys something that's uh, harmful to the community or the uh, uh, neighborhood or country? No. no. That's four down and six to go, Miss So Brent. relieved to get a no. Is, however, the fact that it is destroyed benefit in some way a lady's wardrobe? For example, could it be that the pelt or fur is used? <laughs> five down and five to go, Mr. Garaggio. Would you find this in a particular area? Well, if you were speaking of a particular environment, we'd Farm have to country, agree, yes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be rewarded for destroying this? Well, you would consider that you've received a reward if it was destroyed to a useful purpose, yes. yes. Were you familiar with this product in England as you are in Montreal? 
Yes. Huh. <laughs> and at this time, I would like to bring in Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. Very good. Uh, the only thing that comes to my mind, frankly, Miss Woods, is that this might have something to do with some form of hunting. Would the person who destroys this particular product be considered some type of a sportsman or hunter? Yes. Do you breed foxes for uh, running to hounds? No. Fix that in four to go, Mr. Gable. Well, I try. Is it something that would destroy something uh, like an oak? I'm a city boy myself, and when I get out, you know, beyond the suburbs, I'm lost. And if I knew how to get applause by passing, I would do a joke. <laughs> <that. laughs> You don't care, because if you pass, you've got to stick our lead with it, yes. and you'll get caught up with it. I'll know that. I'll hear from that later, yes. Uh, <laughs> does it do anything to the quality of some kind of wild animal, this product of does yours? Does it do anything to the quality of it? Well, I mean, for instance, if it were to destroy a skunk odor, let us say, if it had that useful function. Uh-huh, that's fine. Or, uh, you want rodents. me to give it to you now, or would you rather wait? At your pleasure, Tom. Okay, that makes it seven down to three to go, Miss Francis. I, I hope you'll forgive me, but I do have to review this. The product itself is at one time or has been alive. Right. That's correct. The, the product, the live animal, is destroyed for some reason or other. Is that what we have right. to use? What we are trying to find out is what animal we're speaking of. That's right. I see. Is it an animal that has legs? No. No. That's it's it. a snake. No, eight down and two to go, Mr. Garigiolo. I'm going to give you one more minute. A legless animal is very embarrassing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the question. Uh, is this used as some kind of a decoy? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, would it be used in, during hunting season, uh, for a particular hunting season? To... Well, now, since you specifically oh. point to hunting, we have to give you a no. Nine down and one to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, well, in, in decoy, I think of ducks, and of course, but they have feet. That's right. So they must have legs. Maybe we have a conference? You may have ten seconds for a conference. Maybe it's a fish of some kind. That hasn't got any legs. But they're edible. A mammalian fish. You there mean? are some fish you don't eat, aren't there? That animal. Thing. Ten yeah. seconds. All right, is go. it a fish? Is it a fish? A no, it isn't. Animal. But you're finally getting somewhere close to it because what Miss Woods does is gathers and packs worms, which fish are mighty interested in. Uh. <laughs> Miss Woods. Miss Woods is employed by the Quebec Bait Supply Company in Lachine, Quebec, and they get night crawlers. Martin, this will interest you. At night time, uh, they go out on a golf course with lights on their heads and tin cans tied to their legs, and of course the night crawlers come out and the lights blind them, I guess. Do they, or do you just see them? I don't know. No, if they see the lights, they disappear, but you have to be quick. You have to be quick. You get the light on them, and then you... And the shocking thing to me was the, 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 the number of night crawlers they would be. You have had... Uh, nights when you've got as many as three to four hundred thousand? Oh, that's correct, with the whole crew. With a picking crew of eighty to a hundred, three I to four hundred thousand. I love saying that Arlene might have some in her house. Yeah, what well, kind of house do you think I run? <laughs> no, because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Martin's looks pretty skinny to me. <laughs> now, that's meant as a compliment, sir. Yes. <laughs> no, but actually they're packaged, you see, and sold in oh, stores. So if you were going fishing the next day, you'd have them in your house today, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Positively. Yes. Ms. Wood, thank you very much. We thank stuck the so panel and it was a joy. Nice to have you with us. Now to meet our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Dee Dee. Dee Dee Thompson, right? Thanks. Miss or Mrs. Thompson? Miss. Miss Thompson. And where are you from, ma'am? Uh, New York City. New York City. Nice to have you with us. Miss Thompson, may I present the panel? 
And now would you join me here and we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know what your line is. tell you that Miss Thompson is salaried and deals in a service, and we will begin with Martin Gable. Thank you, John. Miss Thompson, do you come in contact with the public directly in your, in your job? Yes. Uh, is your... Am I right in thinking that you are not directly in the theatrical business? No. You are right in thinking yes. that Miss Thompson is not, yes. Right. Uh, yeah, you were right. It's just I had... It was a negative question. Too, too negative. negative. No. Do you perform a service for a specific uh, group rather than the public in general? No. no. Nope. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Miss Thompson, is there anything athletic about what you do? Yes. Well, I would say here, if Miss Thompson doesn't mind, <laughs> that... Uh, some degree of agility and certainly liveness and so forth is necessary, but you wouldn't describe it specifically as athletic. But Miss Thompson would, John. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's two down of ten to go, Mr. Grigio. Would both uh, men and women, uh, women uh, come to you for the, your service? Yes. Uh, would, uh, would I come to you for your service? Yes. Do you... <laughs> that makes her happy, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know it makes Joe happy, too. <laughs> Look, not if my wife is watching. Uh, <laughs> let's see, do you, uh, does it come under the, uh, in a category of teaching your services? No. 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 Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you, or are you responsible for giving any small objects to the public? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Do you, do you operate in a building? In a building? In a place. Oh, in, oh, oh uh, yeah, no, uh, no. Does not operate. <laughs> does not operate in a building. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Then, Miss Thompson, do you what you do? Do you do it out of doors? Yes, I do. Are you in anything when you are doing it? <laughs> I don't mean that. <laughs> We're perfectly willing to admit that Miss Thompson wears work clothes. Yes, John, I knew you'd understand. Are you in any kind of a vehicle when you are working? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes, mm-hmm. Uh, do you do something that very often men do? Yes. You certainly don't look like a ditch digger, so I'm going to rule that out. Uh, is it heavy work, difficult work? Well, n no, not really. Well, and to be fair to you, what do you mean by heavy and difficult? Well, I mean, do you work in the, in the earth in any way? In the earth in any way. That's no. six down and four to go, Mr. Garigio. <laughs> do uh, you use your hands? That's the, the, the primary thing. Your hands are the most important. I mean, uh, as opposed to using a product. Does she need a product or a tool uh, or just no, her hands? She does not need to have a tool herself. Just sure, her, her hands, hands are necessary to the proper uh, functioning in her service. In using your services, uh, does it require, uh, would you say, transportation? In that, transportation. It paid, they, yes, a vehicle we've agreed she uh, has a relationship. Do you with. use, uh, you do use other clothes other than street clothes? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. If I saw you walking down the street in these clothes, would I know what you did immediately? That's mm -hmm. a good question, Joe. No. <clears throat> no, that's right. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Wasn't so good. Uh, was do you have anything to do with taking things from one place and dumping them in another? Are you a garbage collector? No. <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Mr. Gable. Is there any sport connected with what you do? No. Nope. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. But you do take things from one place and dump them in another. Yeah. <laughs> do you operate a derrick of any kind? No. Ten down and no more to go. Miss Thompson is a doorman at Johnny Johnston's restaurant here in New York City. <laughs> Yes, 
Do I understand you to mean that Miss Thompson takes people from a cab and dumps them into the restaurant? Is that all? She takes automobiles from people in front of the Johnny Johnston's restaurant and dumps them somewhere else. Oh. Gently. That's the way my gently. car is parked as a rule. Always gently. And greets people and gets taxis. She does all of the full jobs which a doorman performs. And you also stuck the panel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. She's turning the floor to glass! Marge! Marge! What are you doing? Doing the floor with a new cleaner. It's mud. Know what it's doing to the floor? Sure, top job cleans this floor like ammonia cleans glass. Top job? It's got ammonia in it. Procter and Gamble makes it. But from downstairs, you can see. see. See how it takes the dirt up? But Marge! Top Job beats all the leading ammonia cleaners. Liquids, powders, I've tried them all. Top Job leaves this floor looking clean and so much brighter. But look from the basement, honey. Not now, Harry. Okay. But from down there... Oh, oh. Top Job does clean floors like ammonia cleans glass. It never looks so clean and bright. Right. Harry! Cleans floors like ammonia cleans glass. Top job. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my colleagues are always blindfolded, as you know. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, John. Yes. Good. Will you enter a mystery challenger and sign in, please? a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we will begin with Mr. Garagiola. Are you in the movies? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you primarily in nightclubs? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. Are you an athlete? Miss Francis? Are you involved in a sport that uh, Mr. Garagiola has particular interest in? No. By that I mean base, no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Garagiola. Are you, uh, are you on a, are you on a, a roster? Are you a player? Uh, yes. That's a very interesting question. Now, um, are you on the roster? That's a tough question, Joe. Would you like to withdraw it? <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I think that in the terms of the question as you're asking it, I'm going to risk giving you a no. I do not think you'd describe our guest as being on the roster as you would a player in a multiple man sport. Miss Kilgallen? Well, would you say, John, that that eliminated such sports as baseball, football, soccer, yeah. curling, yeah. things like that? <laughs> Especially yeah. curling. Um, <laughs> it would not, however, eliminate golf, would it? No, it would not. Therefore, are you a golfer, Mr. Guest? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Gable. <laughs> are you uh, a boxer? Yes. Miss Francis? Boy, that sure isn't the voice for it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see now. What's the picture of that thing? Are you, uh, uh, are you a man? Are you a man? Yes. No, 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 I know you're a man. Uh, yes, all right. Are you a fellow who was named after a chap that they brought the mountains to by the name of Mohammed? Are you Cassius Will? Clay? Yes. Martin, one thing that uh, would tickle you is that I dare say that our guest has had his, his difficult moments in the ring, but he's never had any more difficult moments in getting that little squeaky voice up. <laughs> After every use, he had to practically cough the floor away over here on the right. 
Uh, actually, you you have been in a boxing. When did you when did you win the gold uh, gold medal in the? Ah, um, uh, that was in 1960, the Olympic Games. The 1960 Games. Right? I was trying to think tonight uh, earlier. And now we are. Uh, working on this uh, new bout with, uh, what's this fellow's name? Uh, Patterson, Floyd, Floyd Patterson. Floyd Patterson. We've had Floyd with us. Uh, right. <laughs> Floyd Patterson. This, this uh, new chap. Here. I would like to tell all of the peoples out here in our TV audience and our live audience that uh, to be there at the closed circuit TVs, which will be uh, shown by Sports Vision, and it will be a great fight, one of history's best. best. Well, I must say this, if Floyd is in there, we know he will be doing his best, and you as the champion of the world will certainly be doing yours, and I think it will be a, a good fight. He's a fine man. Thank you. And well, I'd like to say I've always watched your show ever since I was this, this small. Uh, don't be mean admit, to us. <laughs> I must admit, you really don't look that old. Why, well, thank you, man. Well, you ended up with a bang tonight, panel, so we'll give you congratulations, and we'll all be back after this word. should have brushed his teeth. You're right. Brushing after meals is important to help fight decay. And if you can't brush after every meal, brush often and use Gleam. Between brushings, a harmful deposit of food and bacteria forms on teeth. Proper brushing with Gleam removes most of this harmful deposit. So brush often, even if you can't brush after every meal, and use Gleam. Well, let's see. Uh, I'm afraid I've kind of used up the time panel, so with your good permission, I'll do the good offices. But I want to say again, Joe, it's been grand having you. I hope you'll be back again soon. And Martin, it's wonderful to see you there in the anchor position. And thanks to all of you for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Cotton. This is Johnny Olson speaking. you hurry. By the time you get Pizzeria Pizza home, it's usually cold again. Next time, try Chef Boyardee frozen pizza. From your freezer to your oven. It's ready in just eight minutes. No more half cold pizza. You've got hot pizza right here. Bubbling hot with tender crunchy crust and rich Italian sauce topped with three cheeses. Tastes better than any pizzeria pizza because it's hotter and fresher. Try Chef Boyardee frozen pizza. From freezer to fun in just eight minutes. Tastes better than any pizzeria pizza you bring home. What's My Line was brought to you by Chef Boyardee, makers of a complete line of high-quality Italian-style foods prepared from the recipe of a famous Italian chef.